In this video and lab, I'm once again using GNS3. GNS3 makes this process very easy. One of the best devices to use in GNS3 is the network automation container. If you don't have this device as an installed device, look under available devices in GNS3 and drag the network automation container to your workspace to install it in GNS3. In my example, I already have the network automation container installed, so I'm going to drag it to the GNS3 workspace. What I'll also do is drag an Ethernet switch to the GNS3 workspace and run that on the GNS3 VM. In my example, I'm running all of the devices on the GNS3 VM. The network automation container boots up very quickly. So I want to have the Ethernet switch in the topology, which will allow the Docker container to get an IP address from the NAT cloud and also have internet connectivity. The devices I'm going to automate, however, are Cisco Viral iOS V Layer 2 switches. and Cisco IOS V routers. Cisco viral images are recommended for use in GNS3. You could use other devices, but please note that you may encounter issues when using Dynamips images. So in this example, I'm going to use a viral images and a network automation container. Now in this video, I'm going to build the topology from scratch. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can download the pre-configured topology that I've shared. So rather than building the topology, you can simply download it and import it into GNS3. I'm going to connect the Ethernet switch to the NAT cloud, connect the GNS3 Ether switch to the iOS V layer 2 switch, and connect the switch to the router. So we'll start off with a simple topology. I'll change the switch name to switch one, router name to router one. Very basic topology to start with, but we'll expand this topology and make it more complex as we go through the course. But initially I wanna get you started automating as quickly as possible. You can make the topology look pretty. I'm not worried too much about that. I simply want to get started. So I'll start up the network devices and open up consoles to them. As you can see here, the iOS V layer 2 switch is booting, and so is the iOS V router. The network automation container has already booted up. IFconfig shows us that the network automation container only has an IP version 6 address. It doesn't have an IP version 4 address. We're not going to manage the Ethernet switch through the console. What I'm going to do initially, however, is configure the network automation container to use DHCP. So CAT Etsy Network Interfaces shows us that these lines have been commented out. So I'm going to use Nano Etsy Network Interfaces, and I'm going to uncomment these two lines and press Control X and Y to save the file, and I'm going to overwrite the file. So again, I've used Nano, a simple text editor, to uncomment these two lines, and I've saved the file. Now in the pre-built topology that I've given you, that's already been done for you, so you can simply import the topology, and that configuration would have already been completed for you. I'm gonna stop the network automation container and start it up again, and open up a console to the network automation container. As you can see here, it's obtained an IP address. So ifconfig 
shows us the IP address of the network automation container. The NAT cloud runs a DHCP server and has allocated an IP address to the network automation container. You don't have to use the NAT cloud if you don't want to. You could configure your Cisco router as a DHCP server, but to keep things simple and to get started, I've used the NAT cloud as the DHCP server. The NAT cloud also gives us internet access, so I can use commands such as apt get update to update references on the network automation container. And I can also ping sites on the internet. So I would recommend the use of the NAT cloud and the network automation container in GNS3. One of the reasons for using the network automation container is that it comes pre-installed with both Python version 2.7 as well as Python 3, in this case, Python 3.5. You could install a later release of Python if you want to, but for our examples, Python 3.5 suffices. In other words, it's good enough. But if you want to install a later release of Python, such as 3.6 or later, you can do that. But for our examples, Python 3.5 is good enough. So again, I could run Python version 3 and print something such as network automation or hello world within the network automation container. I could do something such as x equals 1, y equals 2, x plus y equals 3, but that's not really the focus of this course. The focus of this course is network automation. So in Google, I'm going to do a search for Python 3 Telnet. My first hit in Google is the Telnet library on the python.org website, and this gives us details of the Telnet library available in Python. I'm going to scroll to the end of the page. At the end of the page, we find this example, Python script. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to open up a text editor. In this case, I'm using Sublime Text, and I'm going to paste that script into Sublime Text. Now, when it comes to Python IDEs, there are many integrated development environments available for Python. One of the most popular is PyCharm. You can download a free version of PyCharm and use that to edit your scripts. In these examples, I'm going to be creating scripts such as my first Python 3 script directly on the network automation container. However, using Nano for editing scripts isn't very easy, so you may prefer to use an IDE such as PyCharm or Sublime Text for doing your editing. So what I'm going to be doing in a lot of examples is editing the script and creating the script in Sublime Text, and then I'm going to copy it into GNS3. Again, it's up to you. PyCharm is very popular. Sublime Text is very popular. Microsoft Studio Code is another integrated development environment that you may prefer if you're used to using Microsoft products. So it's really up to you. You could use PyCharm, Sublime Text, Visual Studio, or you could simply search in Google for Python IDE and use one of the other IDEs that are freely available on the internet. In a lot of cases, you get free and paid versions of IDEs. I suggest that initially you get the free version of an IDE, such as PyCharm, and use that. And once you get better at Python, you can invest in a paid version of an IDE. But start out by using something that's free.